The classic study that I'm going to be presenting is Sources of Human Psychological Differences, the Minnesota study of twins reared apart, conducted in 1990. What this study was examining was the idea of nature versus nurture, which is not a foreign debate in the world of psychology. The study focused on comparisons such as characteristics, temperament, and interests between monozygotic twins reared apart and reared together. Monozygotic twins are perfect for this because of the fact that they originate from the same fertilized egg and have the same genome, allowing us to study the effects of the environment with full confidence that there are no genetic differences. The researchers of the study hypothesized that it is the indirect effect of genetics that impacts the environment in which children are brought up. In terms of nature and nurture, they believed that nature was impacting nurture, rather than being, it being a competition between the two as we commonly think of it. For the study itself, the researchers studied more than 100 sets of twins and triplets starting in 1979. The participants completed about 50 hours of extensive medical and psychological testing, including personality and occupational interest inventories, mental ability tests. Just to give you an idea, they distributed several forms of IQ tests that tested verbal performance, vocabulary, nonverbal, and problem-solving abilities. Furthermore, they looked at life history, mental health, and sexual life, and filled out a checklist of available household facilities children had that showed what types of resources were available, available to them growing up. The overarching commonality of these twins and triplets was that they were separated early on in life, brought up separately, and reunited as adults, just like the twin sisters Hallie and Al Annie in the classic 1998 film The Parent Trap. The researchers studied participants who had many different upbringings. They studied individuals who grew up under different parenting styles and individuals whose guardians ranged from gay parents, single mothers, and grandparents. Yet they found that these differences were not significant game changers, even within families like Brangelina's made up of adoption. In addition, the environment's socioeconomic status, measures used in the study, countries of origin, and even time period all produced shockingly similar results. While similar upbringing may have impacted social closeness, religious interests, and values, only 30% of differences in IQ and general intelligence could be accounted for by environmental factors. The other 70% of differences in IQ and general intelligence could be accounted for by genetic factors. They also found that the highest correlation coefficient for similar, similar, similarity of traits between monozygotic twins reared apart was a mere 0.03, which showed that socioeconomic status and environment did not have a significant effect on IQ and general intelligence. In conclusion, the researchers of the study found that growing up in the same environment does not have a significant effect for most traits, unless there is an actual trauma in the shared early environment. Nor do different cultures and institutions, such as parents, play a large role in psychological traits as we once thought. It is the indirect effect of genetics, nature, that influences how someone is brought up, nurture, rather than it being a battle between nature and nurture as we currently think of it. One of the ways the article described this phenomenon was the term in terms of babies' temperaments. Babies with specific temperaments determined by the genome are likely to bring about specific parental responses. For example, babies who are active and outgoing are likely to experience different responses from parents in general than babies who are much quieter and reserved in nature. The researchers claim that in general, the specific parental responses, responses catered to the temperaments of babies are likely to be similar across the board, creating relatively homogenous environments of upbringing. While it is important to recognize that this is not always the case and that there is, are always exceptions, I thought this example did a good job of demonstrating how genetics indirectly impact the environment, as the hypothesis predicted. The researchers emphasized that the genetic impacts the, the genome impacts the interests and personality of an individual. So while it is not impossible to change these natural traits, energy is much better spent enhancing existing talents and interests rather than trying to make them do something they are not interested in. They also reminded us as researcher, as readers that these results should not dampen the importance of institutions such as parenting and education. At the end of the day, it is not a competition between nature and nurture, but rather an interaction in which the, the underlying nature affects nurture.